Huawei breaks the HBM blockade and solves the high-end memory chokehold problem. The high-end memory that the U.S. has restricted for three years has been utterly defeated by Huawei with a low-cost solution. It's mind-boggling even to industry veterans. Huawei's equivalent performance product costs half the price of the HBM sold by Samsung and SK Hynix, and it still manages to make a profit. What's even more revolutionary is Huawei's declaration. From now on, it will double HBM computing power every year, completely seizing back the pricing power for high-end memory. Some might not know what HBM is, so let's put it simply, this thing is the superhighway for AI servers. The speed of data transfer depends entirely on it. Previously, only South Korea's Samsung and SK Hynix and the US's Micron could build this road. They charged whatever toll they wanted. If NVIDIA wanted to assemble a high-end AI server, it had to beg these three companies for supply. This breakthrough by Huawei is equivalent to building a wider road itself and charging a lower toll. The bigger shock is yet to come. Huawei equipped its HBM with an efficiency engine, the FP8 precision format. Simply put, while others use large trucks that leak half the data, Huawei uses precise, small vans that are fully loaded and run fast capable of transferring 1.6 terabytes of data per second, which is 20% faster than Samsung's top HBM 3E. Moreover, Huawei has tied this technology to its proprietary Ascend chip, forming a combined strategy that others cannot easily copy. Next, we will thoroughly analyze how fierce Huawei's low-cost counter-kill strategy is, examine how European and American companies have suffered from monopolistic thinking and discuss the disruptive impact of this event on the global technology landscape. Main text. First, the hard data. Huawei's self-developed HIBL 1.0 HBM boasts a capacity of 128 gigabytes, a bandwidth of 1.6 terabytes per second, supports FP8 precision, and delivers computing power directly up to one flops. What's even more aggressive is the cost. Industry estimates put the cost of a single Samsung HBM 3E at $80, while Huawei's equivalent product costs only $55, a price cut of more than 30%. In contrast, Samsung saw its HBM market share plummet from 41% to 17% last year due to its failure to deliver to NVIDIA, and it even failed the third HBM 3E certification, essentially handing the top position to SK Hynix. The key to this matter is not merely making it, but making it at a low cost. It should be noted that SK Hynix invested $12 billion to build factories to expand HBM capacity, a process that takes two years. Huawei, however, achieved mass production by innovating in packaging technology and simply modifying existing production lines with an investment that is a mere fraction of SK Hynix's outlay. The U.S. had bet that Huawei would spend heavily and take a long detour on high-end memory. Instead, Huawei used clever force to circumvent the trap, and this is what truly alarms Western companies. Commentary and Analysis Huawei's breakthrough tears open the hypocritical veil of Western technological monopolies. What they call high-end is often built on high investment to raise the barrier, rather than Technological irreplaceability. Samsung and SK Hynix have grown accustomed to erecting barriers with multi-billion dollar investments, forgetting that the core of technological innovation is efficiency improvement. When Huawei maximized the computing power-to-price ratio, with FP8 precision, those enterprises relying on monopolies to inflate prices naturally panicked. This is not just a technological victory, but a slap in the face to capitalism-only theory proving that true core technology is never simply amassed with money. Next, let's look at the plight of U.S. domestic companies. Micron Technology, the only U.S. player in HBM, currently holds only a 7% market share, a fraction of Huawei's. To seize market share, Micron invested $8 billion in capacity expansion and declared a goal of hitting 20% market share in 2025. Yet, the reality is that its HBM product has not even passed AMD's certification. More ironically, the U.S. government provided Micron with a $5.2 billion subsidy, demanding it 
prioritize meeting the needs of U.S. companies. This requirement has effectively tied Micron to the domestic market, causing it to miss opportunities for collaboration with global AI companies. In contrast, Huawei's HBM was deeply integrated with the Ascend 950 chip upon release, and the Ascend chip has already entered the intelligent driving systems of many European automakers. This means Huawei is not selling a standalone memory module but an integrated solution of computing power and storage. Micron is still making memory in isolation, having failed to even ensure good compatibility with domestic USAI chip companies. This solo combat model is completely vulnerable against Huawei's ecosystem war. Commentary and analysis. Micron's dilemma is a microcosm of the U.S. technology industry, an excessive reliance on government subsidies and trade protection, while neglecting that the essence of technological innovation is synergy. Huawei's chip plus memory ecosystem has precisely struck the soft spot of Western companies. Fighting solo. The U.S. intended to starve Huawei through blockade, but this has instead forced Huawei to build a more complete industry chain. This teaches us that technological competition is never a single-point duel but a contest between ecosystem systems, and protected enterprises will never become truly strong. The experience of European companies further illustrates the point. Germany's Infineon was once a memory giant but was defeated around 2000 by the combined. Dumping at low prices by Micron and Samsung, subsequently withdrawing completely from the high-end memory market. Now Europe wants to rebuild its semiconductor industry chain, investing 43 billion euros in the European Chips Act. But it cannot even establish a single HBM production line. Core technology is monopolized by South Korea and the US. Equipment is restricted by the US. And it cannot even recruit skilled workers. In contrast, during the three years of the blockade, Huawei rallied over 200 domestic supporting companies to tackle the problem, effectively completing the entire upstream and downstream of the HBM industry chain. Even more disruptive is the pricing logic. SK Hynix's HBM 3E, due to its monopoly, raised its price by 50% this year, costing Nvidia an additional $400 million to purchase 100,000 units. Huawei, however, announced that its HBM would be priced at cost plus 10% profit, directly smashing the excessive profit margin of high-end memory. This immediately drew frantic interest from European automakers and tech companies seeking cooperation, as no one wants to be slaughtered as a sucker by US and South Korean companies. Commentary and analysis. Europe's lesson and Huawei's rise form a sharp contrast. The moat of the technology industry is never built on others' charity, but on the determination for independent innovation. Europe, having abandoned the memory industry back then, now has to pay a tenfold price to make up for it. Huawei, having faced a chokehold without flinching, can now command pricing power. Huawei's low-price strategy is not malicious competition, but a return to value after breaking the monopoly. It makes it clear to global enterprises that technology should serve development, not be a tool for wealth accumulation by a few. This is the right path for global technological progress. There is another secret to uncover. Huawei's promise of doubling computing power every year is not an empty claim. The Ascend 950 chip has already achieved one flops of FP8 computing power. The planned Ascend 960 aims for two flops and the 970 will go straight to four flops. How terrifying is this speed? It took Samsung three years to go from HBM2 to HBM3, doubling computing power once. Huawei plans to accomplish this every year, relying on the continuous optimization of FP8 precision and the iteration of packaging technology. The US's Micron has yet to release an HBM product that supports FP8 precision lagging behind by a full generation in terms of technology follow-up. What's even more aggressive is Huawei's ecosystem binding strategy. It bundles HBM with Ascend chips and the Harmony OS system and sells the package to AI startups globally, providing not only hardware but also open-source software development tools. This move directly undercuts Samsung. Samsung only sells memory, while Huawei sells a complete solution 
which saves customers half the debugging time when using Huawei's products. Now, even Europe's Amazon Cloud is testing Huawei's solution simply because it is cheaper and better to use. Commentary and analysis. Huawei's computing power sprint has completely rewritten the rules of the high-end memory game. Previously, South Korean and U.S. companies relied on slow technology iteration to maintain their monopoly. Now Huawei's doubling every year. Speed is forcing them into a life-or-death race. This is not only a display of technological strength but a victory of strategic thinking. Turning a single product into an ecosystem makes it impossible for opponents to attack effectively. The U.S. blockade has ironically become Huawei's catalyst allowing it to jump out of the framework set by the West and forge a more efficient path to innovation. This is what monopolists fear the most. Conclusion This HBM breakthrough by Huawei is not an accidental technological explosion, but a microcosm of Chinese technology companies. Desperate counterattack. Under blockade. It proves that monopoly and blockade can never stop the pace of innovation and only open cooperation can truly make technology serve humanity. If you think Huawei's move is tough enough, please share it with more people, letting them know the backbone and strength of Chinese enterprises. You are also welcome to discuss in the comments section, which chokehold area do you think Huawei will break through next? Thank you for reading, see you in the comments section.